Welcome to Wander Mode, a podcast that wanders through topics such as entrepreneurship, traveling, and mamahood. As a teacher turned entrepreneur and a mama to one, I am sharing my tips and tricks to maintain harmony in a multifaceted life. Let's wander. Welcome, Wanderers, to another exciting installment of Wander Mode. I am your host, Julie Thomas, and today I have the privilege of hosting a truly remarkable guest. She is not simply an entrepreneur. She is an adventurepreneur who has harnessed her passion for adventure, transforming it not only into the thriving brick-and-mortar business, wheelies and waves, but also multiple six-figure ventures. But hold on to your hiking boots because that's not all. Our guest is also a dedicated business coach with a unique and inspiring mission to empower mothers to embrace a life brimming with adventure, which, as you know, is a girl after my own heart. She is here today to illuminate her incredible journey, share valuable insights, and sprinkle us with her wisdom. So without further ado, I extend a heartfelt welcome to Courtney Burton. And Courtney, thanks so much for chatting with me today. I am so excited to be here and to talk with you. This is what I love to do. So I'm excited to be here. All right. Well, let's jump in. So let's give people some context for where your life was prior to starting this whole entrepreneurial journey of yours. Absolutely. So I feel like your listeners are going to relate to this because either they were there at some point or maybe they're there right now. I live in a small mountain town in the mountains of Colorado. And I moved here with my husband, man, 12 years ago now, because we wanted to spend time outside playing and going on adventures and hiking and biking and being on the river and doing all the fun things that you do in mountain towns. And when we got here, we quickly realized that in order to survive here, and I'm not talking thrive, I am talking survive. We had to have like 87 jobs, literally. That's what it felt like at least. So I was a bartender a waitress. I was a personal trainer. I was a group fitness instructor. And I was the head CrossFit coach of the gym. And my husband was a mechanic. So literally I would wake up at 5 30 in the morning. I would start, you know, my group fitness classes at 6 AM. And then I'd be bartending behind the bar until like one in the morning. And my husband worked Monday through Friday from nine to six. And we really just never really saw each other, never really had the opportunity to spend time together. And I just remember thinking so clearly, man, there's got to be more to life than this. Like I saw these other successful people. And for me, it really started, which is kind of opposite. I feel like of people, I started with the brick and mortar business and I saw these other people in town that were five years older than me, 10 years older than me. And they have these successful businesses. And I was like, how did they do it? Like, how do you start a business in a town? And like, because mountain towns are expensive. It's not inexpensive to start anything here. And so my husband and I really looked around the town. We looked at where the gaps were in recreation. I live in Crested Butte, Colorado, um, and it's a mountain biking Mecca. So there's tons of mountain biking shops here and tons of ski shops. And at the time I actually, my husband and I are from the East coast and I grew up, I was a compet, I was a competitive surfer on the East coast. So I grew up surfing competitions from age like 11 to 18. And I just loved being on the water. And I looked around me and there was one other small shop that was renting like three paddle boards out of it. And honestly, they weren't doing a great job. Like we would go there to run a paddleboard and they were like, throw it on your roof and strap it. See you later. Um, and we were like, we don't have straps. What do you mean? So I bought a paddleboard and I was out paddling and people kept asking me like, where'd you get that? Did you rent that in town? And I went home. It was June, 2015 to my husband. And I said, we're buying 
more of these and we're starting a business. And he was like, we have like $3,000 in our savings account. We don't have money just to start businesses. And I was like, I think this is going to be a good bet. And so here's the thing about me that you'll learn on this podcast. I am an action taker, figure it out later. And so within one week, I had my LLC. I had, we, my husband and I drove to Telluride, bought six paddle boards from a local Colorado company. I had booked my first client and I took them on a paddle down the river. Now that I know, now I know in retrospect that I didn't have my permit to do that. So it was illegal to do that, but I will never forget that feeling. She paid me $25 for a two hour excursion, but I will never forget the feeling of walking down the road with my paddle boards, a smile on my face from ear to ear and being like, oh my gosh, somebody just paid me to do that, to do something I love. And I was hooked. Like that's where the entrepreneurial journey start started. I was hooked. And I want to tell you that at that point, I was 30 years old. I had been a career bartender and waitress at that point for about 10, 12 years. And I remember thinking, I'm not smart enough to open a business. I don't know anything about business. I almost failed out of college. Who's going to take me seriously? And all it took was one freaking one person's mom to say, yeah, I'll, I'll go on a paddleboard with you and pay me $25. And I was like, I don't care if anybody takes me seriously. I'm going to chase this feeling forever. Yeah. And now here we are. We have two locations of wheelies and waves. Now we've expanded to also own Pedago Gunnison, which is an electric bike shop. Um, we have a skate shop. We do merchandise and apparel. We rent, we have thousands of rentals a summer and we've created this little mini empire in the Gunnison Crested Butte Valley. And it's amazing. Wow. That's incredible. And, and it's like you said, it's so crazy that when you think $25 for two hours, but yet that is $25 that you will literally remember for the rest of your life. So I can envision you walking down the road with the $25 in your pocket and the, and the paddleboard. So when you came home and told your husband about this experience, was he also like instantly like this is it, or did it continue to take more convincing for him? No, he was like, that's amazing. Like I can see where this goes. He, my husband, Brayden, here's one thing about him. While I am the excited action taker, he is my behind the scenes, so supportive, but also very realistic. Like he's a numbers man. So he's going to look at everything by the numbers, but he saw that and he saw how excited I was. And he saw the opportunity in a growing community, in a growing town. And he was like, yes, I'll support you on this. And so you heard my schedule. It's not like I had a ton of free time to start a business. And so we didn't start as a brick and mortar. We started as a delivery business. I would between eight and 9 AM in the morning, um, between my classes, my fitness classes, I was teaching, I would drive around town and deliver paddle boards. We would schedule out deliveries. I would deliver the paddle boards around town and then I would go teach all my classes. When my husband got off work at 6 PM, he would drive around pick up all the paddle boards, clean them, get them ready to go for the next morning. And I would wake up the morning, teach my fitness class at 6 a.m., come home, load up the paddle boards in the back, and then drive around and deliver them. And, and I would kind of, I had, we, I mean, the work phone was my cell phone. And so I'd be fielding calls throughout the day or text messages. And then I told you I was a bartender and waitress at night. And that's really where we got a lot of our first clients they were people that I was talking to that were in town visiting and I was just having conversations with people and every business is simply talking to people. 
And that's how we got out. I didn't have a big marketing budget. We didn't do ads in newspapers. We didn't do Facebook marketing. It was me at night talking to people. What are you guys doing the next couple of days here on vacation? You should take some paddle boards up to the lake. You would absolutely love it. It's a beautiful thing to do. I actually will deliver them. <laughs> I was like, what's your phone number? And I would get their phone numbers and I would text them in the morning. When do you want the paddle boards? And so it was boots on the ground. Mm -hmm. And it, it's very clear that you are a boots on the ground and kind of like, I'm going to sell this right until I kind of make, make it happen. Like I'm going to manifest it. I can see this happening, you know, out in my future. So you're, you're doing all these things and both of you are running these very aggressive schedules. At what point do you start letting go of some things? Like, was there a very clear, distinct situation where you're like, okay, now this has become something and we do need to turn it into more of a brick and mortar versus delivery? Or like, at what point do you decide I need to let go of some of my other jobs that are paying the bills too? Yeah, that is definitely a balance because I feel like a lot of people that have you know, new businesses, they're new entrepreneurs, they're waiting to hit that money goal that replaces their current income. You're never going to replace your current income if you're not going all in on your new business. And so, man, it was the next summer and once again, my husband is a, is a numbers person. So that first summer, I think we did like, we made like, I don't know, $10,000 with the paddle boards. And I was just like on the ground floor. And I was like, you could have told me that I made a million dollars. I was like, I just made $10,000. Great. I was running around town like a crazy person doing something I love. Like, this is it. This is the end. I'll be on my, my husband. Once again, the numbers person, well, we got to pay taxes on it, Courtney. And the insurance costs $2,000 and you know, and I was like, Oh, so we really didn't make any money. Um, you didn't have to tell, I mean, I, it didn't matter. $10,000 for 10. I was very excited. The next summer we approached a local business. It was actually a local gas station. It was our true value in town. And there was a gas station and like a hardware store. And they had this old fenced in area on the side they used to use as a garden center and they weren't really using it. It was kind of just like a catch all for like random stuff. So we went to them and made the proposal. Listen, can we rent out this spot from you June, July, and August for our paddleboard rental business? We're going to set up some paddle boards. People will pull around back, but they're going to come inside to get all of their drinks and snacks and sunscreen and all the things they need for the day for going up to the lake or on the river. How does that sound? And, you know, we offered them money and they were like, that sounds great. And so that summer we had our first location the next summer and I was still teaching. I went down on the number of fitness classes. I still worked at night as a waitress and bartender. And I think Braden, he was still a mechanic, but he still worked in the mechanic shop then. So I think all of our boards were still set up, but we did a lot of like call for your appointment kind of thing. But that summer we more than doubled our revenue because we had the location in town, a popular location that people stopped at to get gas. It was really the only gas station in town. And then it was the third summer that 2017, that fall, I started my, um, or sorry, that, that February, excuse me, that February of 2017, I started my online business. And once again, it was, a situation where Courtney, you're still bartending and waitressing. You're still teaching fitness classes. You're still a CrossFit coach and you have this brick and mortar business. Are you really going to add on one more thing? But once again, just like I saw those other successful business owners in town and was like, how do I get there? 
I saw all these women online earning income and they were earning income in the fitness space. And I remember finding the woman that became my mentor and she was in her late thirties and she looked amazing and she was traveling in Mexico for a month and she was still earning income. And I was like, whatever you're doing, I don't care. I want to learn more about it. And I found out later that it was through a network marketing business, which is something that I literally never in a million years saw myself doing or even being aligned with. But what I knew is that the workouts were awesome as a personal trainer and a CrossFit coach. I was like, these are great. And they work. And the nutrition plans were amazing. And I thought, why not try? Why not just see what I can learn? And that was the summer that I quit bartending and waiting tables. I took a huge pay cut by doing that. I quit all of my in-person training in the gym and in the CrossFit uh, CrossFit coaching and went all in on my online business and my brick and mortar business. And it was scary. My husband actually quit being a mechanic that year too. It all happened at once. That's wild that 2017 was the last time that anybody sent us a paycheck that wasn't our own. But we knew we had something good. And we knew that we could always go get jobs bartending and waitressing, go get jobs working on cars if it didn't work out. And that summer... We hired employees. We were at the shop full time. We were going all in. And that summer, I think we hit $50,000 in revenue just in the three month period. And we were like, okay, we're on to something. And my online fitness business, I started quickly. I went all in and quickly I was earning $1,000, $2,000 a month. And we were like, okay, I, we can do this. We have something here. But it took that big risk of stepping away from all of the security to to really create the space to go all in on us and our businesses. Mm -hmm. So you talking about that, like my husband and I are are in that exact place, right? Like we, we are where you were in 2017, where it's like now both of us have officially stepped away from paychecks, stepped away from benefits that are provided with that. We're, you know, we're having to figure out our own kind of retirement plan and all those things. So do you think your ability to move through that fear that can grip you in that situation, that fear of what happens if I let go of this is your personalities? combined? Is it a mindset that you have to have? Is it seeking out some coaches for additional support? Is it a handful of things? Like, what do you think goes into being able to like actually pull that trigger and like step away from that security? It is a combination of a lot of things. Are you familiar with the Enneagram tests? Mm -mm. Okay. So it's like a person, it's like your personality has a number on it. I'm a seven, which means I am a seven is an adventurer, uh, a risk taker, somebody that just, I am excited for the next thing. What's happening. Let's go. Like I am the hype squad. My husband is a six, which means he is risk management. Actually, our personalities are not supposed to mesh together, but somehow they do, um, a couple things leading up to 2017 and both of us fully stepping away happened. One, we invested in ourselves and we went to a Tony Robbins event, which Tony Robbins is a big personal development guru. Um, my husband, one of my husband's best friends was very into Tony Robbins and we watched his entire life transform And so my husband actually was like, you need to go to this event with me. And I was like, at the time there was this movie out called I'm not your guru. And that's the only thing I knew about Tony Robbins. And I watched it. And in the video, Tony's like coaching through this man 
who's in this relationship he doesn't want to be in anymore. And the man like calls his wife on the phone and is like, I want a divorce. And everybody's like, oh, yay, the event. And so I'm watching this and I'm like, I've got to go to this thing with Brayden or else he's going to divorce me. Like, I'm going to get the phone call from the event where we're getting divorced. And so I was like, okay, I'll do it. Let's go. I truly believe that. So that's investing in a coach, right? That's investing in mindset work. And your mindset determines your outcome in life. Everything that you have currently, and if your current situation isn't what you want, this might be hard to hear, but everything you have in your life starts right here in between your ears. It starts with your thoughts. What are you thinking every single day? And those thoughts become your words and your words become your actions and your actions become your life. And it goes as far as your relationships. What are you thinking about your husband on a daily basis? Are you thinking, oh, he didn't clean up the kitchen again, or he didn't do this again? Are you focusing on the things he didn't do for you? Or are you focusing on the things that he did? And it's such a little shift in your brain that's going to cause you to have appreciation for your spouse, which is going to cause you to take those little steps to do those extra things, which is going to cause your relationship to thrive. It's the same thing in your business. If you're thinking, oh my gosh, this isn't going to happen for me. This isn't going to work for me. You know, even if you have the one of like, I can do this, but can you really do this, Courtney? Can you really do this? That creates my actions and my actions aren't going to be intentional towards creating the businesses I want. And so I really, from that one event, both my husband, Brayden and I, we looked at each other and we, we really looked at our lives and said, what do we want? What do we really want our lives to be like? And we wanted to be able to travel. We wanted to, and I, I'm not, a sh- I, I think a lot of women, especially feel shame around wanting money or wanting to be wealthy. I'm not ashamed to say I want to be wealthy because that wealth helps me impact even more women. That wealth helps me donate to the charities that I want to donate to. That wealth helps me build the surf camp in Nicaragua that has been a dream on my heart for years. And so, and yeah, and that wealth helps me fly first class to those places. Because if you know, sitting in coach to Thailand is not fun. So truly, I think it starts with the mindset. It starts with hiring coaches And then once again, my husband is very fiscally responsible. He never tells me how much we have in savings because if I knew, I'd be like, well, why are we working? Let's go fly around the world right now. He never tells me how much we have in savings. Um, We need to keep working, Courtney. (laughs) We need to keep working, Courtney. He had a 401k from a previous uh, collision repair position that he had in Maryland, where we're both from. So he had like a 401k. We owned a home in Maryland together. And then at that point, we had refied our house in Maryland to purchase a house in Gunnison, Colorado, which is like 30 minutes from Crested Butte and where we live now. And so around that time, my husband really started getting into real estate as well and understanding how to create wealth through real estate investing. And so he was like, we have these two houses. We have my 401k. You know how to bartend and waitress. I have the skills and mechanic. If it all falls apart and we get to this point in our savings and our whatever, we'll sell one of the houses. We'll get regular jobs again and we'll, and we'll figure it out. So I think it's a balance of like risk management and and risk. Truly, Tony Robbins says that your life and 
your quality life, your quality of life is based on how comfortable you are with taking risks and being uncomfortable. And I think taking risks and, and being uncomfortable is so important, but as you said, you can still have a little bit of that net, right. To catch yourself. Like you always can fall back on the skills that you had prior to taking the leap. If, if needed, but they need teachers. Like I'm sure that you could walk into a school today and probably get a job. Yes. Yes. And, and that mindset was exactly what it was for me too. It, it was the longest year of my life trying to decide whether or not I was going to walk away and hundred percent focus on this business. And that is exactly what I had to tell myself is that, okay, Julie, what is the worst case scenario here? I step away from teaching for a year two. I've kept my license current and I can go back into a school, get hired and do this job that I loved even then that I'll continue to love if, if this doesn't play out how I was hoping, but like, but like you said, having that mindset though, and, and your thoughts become your words, which become your actions. You have to have that in place in order to then achieve those dreams. (laughs) Right. And yeah, I love it. I love it. So many questions came out of what you just shared. So, so explain a little bit more like at, from a female perspective in this business and and gaining this wealth through a lot of hard work how have you navigated that have you had some adverse reactions to you being a female in this space or has it been mostly been positive and people have been supportive tell me tell me what it is like to be a, a woman in this space that you're that you're in Yes, there aren't a ton of female owned adventure brick and mortar businesses. It is a fairly male dominated industry, but I will say the Gunnison Valley is unique in the fact that there are a decent amount of women owned adventure business. I guess I'm thinking of three in particular. One of the main mountain bike shops is female owned and then wheelies and waves, of course, I, my husband and I started together. And so honestly, as far as in the adventure space, I have never seen it as a deterrent. And the reason why, and maybe you've had this experience before, but listen, I grew up at the beach. I did not grow up in the mountains. I moved here in 2011, like I've skied, like I grew up going for like week long ski trips. I wasn't this amazing skier. I never rode a bike before with gears. Like I grew up riding like beach cruisers on the boardwalk, right? No gears. Um, I not really hiked a bunch. Like I was completely new to mountain sports. And that first summer that we were here, I was a breakfast waitress. My husband was a lifty on the mountain. And I saved all of my money to buy a mountain bike at the end of the summer. And I was so excited. I saved like $2,000 to buy a used mountain bike, which that's a lot of money when you're a breakfast waitress, like slinging pancakes. And I walked into all of the bike shops and especially back then it was a very male dominated industry. and. Once again, I knew nothing about mountain biking. I just knew that everybody in town did it and loved it. And I wanted to be a part of the cool kid crew. And so I wanted to get a mountain bike. And every single shop I walked into made me feel like an idiot. Because I didn't know if I wanted a hardtail or full suspension. I didn't know about derailers or gears or shifting or what kind of bike I wanted And here I am, a customer with $2,000 cash in my hand, wanting to give it to them. And I just want somebody to be nice to me. And so I'll never forget that experience. I actually had to get a male friend who used to own a bike shop in town to come with me into the bike shop so I could purchase a bike because they would talk to him 
but they wouldn't talk to me. And so I actually think my superpower in being a female business owner, specifically with my brick and mortar is I told my husband, I want every single person that walks in our store. And this is a motto that when we train our employees at the beginning of the summer, that we go over again and again and again, I want every single person that walks into my store to feel cool. I want them to feel like a part of the wheelies and waves family. And we have families that come back year after year after year, and we know them and they love us now. And they know our family because when they came in and asked us, which way do you float on the river? We didn't say, are you kidding me? You don't know how to float on the river. We were like, oh, you put in here and take out here. It's so much fun. You're going to love it. Oh my gosh. When they had the paddle backwards on the paddle board, we didn't say, you don't know how to hold your paddle. You're dumb. No, we were like, hey, looking cool is half the battle. This is the front of the paddle. This is how you stand on the board. This is how you carry it. We showed them the way. And so I truly think having compassion as a female in the industry, that was our, that gave us an edge. I, I love that using it as an edge and, and bringing your unique skill set into, into that space. And I'm sure it took to this concept of how can we take this extreme sport or activity, or, you know, at least some people view it as extreme, like mountain biking. I, that would be very intimidating to me to go throw myself onto a mountain bike and go down a hill, but you know, to be able to see another female in that space and say, oh, wow. Okay. You know, like if she can figure out how to do it and look at how awesome it looks and look at how fun it looks, I can do that too. Um, you know, there's something unique that, that you can bring into that space and like get a whole new audience that perhaps others can't reach. Yes. And it's the whole empowerment piece. I mean, standing up on a paddleboard on a high alpine lake for the first time is no, it's no small feat for a lot of people that aren't used to it. And so when they can do that, man, it runs into the rest of their life and they know that they can do other things that might seem hard. And they realize, man, if I can stand up on a paddleboard on a 35 degree lake, I can have this business meeting or have this hard conversation or whatever else it is. Mm -hmm. All those little tiny confidence builders and yeah, where there isn't as much of an audience when you're, you know, out in the middle of a lake <laughs> compared to now I'm putting myself in front of a bunch of people in a business meeting. <laughs> exactly. And I can tell you, it's helped my confidence, you know, getting into adventure sports and then growing an online business because especially in the online space, putting yourself out there on social media is scary for a lot of people. It really is. But building that confidence muscle by mountain biking for the first time or paddling down the river or hiking to the top of a mountain, whatever it is, knowing that I could do that, like I can post on social media. I can do this. It doesn't matter what the popular girl from high school thinks about me. She is not paying my bills. She's not, I don't care if she's like, who does Courtney Burton think she is posting on social media, like some fitness influencer. Like I had 200 followers across all social platforms when I started my online business. And I built, I've built now to over 36,000 over different platforms which is neither here nor there. There's people with way bigger platforms than me and that's fine. I don't care about the size of my platform. I care about the size of my impact and who is following me. If I can connect with them, that's what I care about. And I just had to get over the fact that the popular girls from high school were probably going to talk about me. <laughs> and that's okay. Um. Wow. So what you just said about not caring about the size of your platform, but caring a lot more about the size of your impact. Tell me a little bit more about these online businesses that you've created, because I know that's kind of your core mission is impacting other mamas, other women um, to, to live their best lives, right? So talk to me about that impact that you're hoping to have and kind of what are those businesses? What are they focused on? How are you getting them out there? Absolutely. 
Like I mentioned before, I started my first online business in 2017, mainly in the fitness and wellness space. And that's really where I started to learn how to brand yourself online, how to niche down and how to reach an audience. And once again, there are plenty of people out there with bigger followings than me, but they're not connecting with their ideal client. And that's the secret to growing on social media is knowing exactly who you're talking to and talking to that person day after day after day. So as I started to grow my fitness business and really helping women all over the country, all over the world, really feel good. My mission with fitness was never to lose weight or get skinny. It was always to feel strong enough to get out there and go on ventures. And as I grew in the fitness space, I also started mentoring women to open their own fitness businesses as well. So sharing how to grow on social media, how to connect with your audience, how to sell products and programs, all of those things. And over the years, I've really just connected with so many women on so many different platforms that wanted to build businesses, both brick and mortar, lots of people reaching out to me saying, hey, Courtney, how did you build wheelies and waves? What were the steps you took? How did you get insurance, LLC, permits, all of these things that you need in order to start a brick and mortar business? And also, how did you grow your online business? What is what does this look like? And I said, listen, I can mentor you in the fitness space to grow a fitness business. And they were saying, I mean, I talked to so many women and they were, would say, you know, I don't want to do it in the fitness space, or I don't want to sell somebody else's products. I really want to create my own thing. So over the years, I've had this on my heart to expand my coaching I have spent, and I'm not ashamed to say it, I am proud to say it, I have spent tens of thousands of dollars on coaching and personal development and master classes and masterminds and cohorts and going to see um, speakers live and spending, investing money there and also investing money in online courses to grow my business and my mindset. And every time I've invested the return, the ROI has been massive. My husband has done the same in the real estate space where he goes to big real estate conventions and they cost thousands of dollars to go to. But every time he comes back with knowledge and connections and more network, and it's always grown our business. And I just realized that I really wanted to help not just women in the health and wellness space, but all women, specifically women that love, like that are just like me, that want to earn income so they can spend more time outside going on hikes and traveling for months at a time with their families and still earn income. That's truly who I want to help and my niche. I opened Adventurepreneur Academy and Coach Courtney Burton just a couple months ago. And already this, the impact that it's made on other women's lives, the businesses that they're starting and the lives they're changing as well, because of being in the program and getting the coaching. It's incredible. I just can't wait to see, to continue to see the ripple effect of other adventurepreneurs out there that get back from the hike with their family and finally get back to service and check their phones and see that somebody just purchased their course online that they created. And not to mention, I can't wait to see. So Adventurepreneur Academy is a course building academy. So it's helping women build online digital courses to help educate others on whatever topic they're passionate about. Honestly, if it's something that you're passionate about, you can make a course about it. And truly what courses are, is they're just taking your years of education on a certain topic and condensing it into a bite-sized digestible 
piece for somebody else. For example, I have nine years of business experience. I've spent tens of thousands of dollars on personal development and business courses and learning how to build sales funnels and learning how to write copy and all these other things that have helped me grow my businesses to six and seven figure businesses. I've condensed this into a small bite-sized course for women to take so that way they can build their own businesses and also get coaching from me. It's a whole mastermind. We have weekly Q and A's, we have group chat. So we have all the things. So we're in contacts. I really want to see my clients be successful, but that's all a course is. So if somebody knows a lot about your wedding planner, you have a wedding planning business and you want to help brides plan weddings, but they don't have the money to hire you. You could create a smaller course that you could sell online to women for $497 for the course. And just imagine all the women who you're helping save money so they can go on a badass honeymoon. Cause let me tell you, that's what most, and that's what my people want to do. I didn't care. Like my wedding was great. I wanted where we went to Costa Rica for 20 days. I wanted the honeymoon, right? And so that's a course that could help women have amazing weddings, but also save money for the honeymoon. And that's truly what I'm so excited about right now and what I'm helping women do. Mm -hmm. Now, I already kind of know what your answer is going to be to this because I was on a call with you last night <laughs> about the Adventurepreneur Academy and all the things. So what would you say though, to the, the woman that is sitting out there thinking, okay, I have these ideas, but I'm not an expert. I don't have the license. I, you know, I don't have the big fancy degree. Why would anybody listen to me? What would your response to that be? You don't have to be the expert. You just have to be a couple steps ahead of your ideal client. I want you to think back to Courtney Burton starting her paddleboard business with this going and buying a couple paddleboards and walking down the street and charging $25 for two hours. I was not the expert. I had just gotten my LLC and I realized later that I didn't have the proper insurance to do that. But I knew that I was one step ahead of that client and that I could help her feel confident on a paddleboard. That's what I knew. I didn't know all the ins and outs of business and everything else. I wish there was a course back then on how to start your own paddleboard business because I would have purchased it, right? It saved me a lot of grief and a lot of hardship of trying to figure it out on my own. Really, you just have to be a couple steps ahead of the person and be excited and be passionate about your topic. And trust me, as you're building out your course, you will become the expert in it because you're going to be teaching it to somebody else. And you feel so confident in what you have to share. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think something that you said too, it, it is what has recently resonated with me because I'm, I'm four months away now from having left my job and things like that. And I've kind of struggled through YouTube videos. I've struggled through, you know, different websites of people who claim that they're experts on something to realize like, oh my gosh, now I've just wasted 30 minutes of my time, not getting to what I need, whatever. And I think something that you said, which was you invested in coaches, you put money into trainings. What is your advice around that for people, like how much value now that you've spent tens of thousands of dollars on a variety of resources, what would you say has been the most valuable return? Because for you, you've made it back, right? And you see the value in having spent those dollars, but for someone who's sitting there going, oh my gosh, like I have such a hard time letting go of the little bit of money that I have to make this happen. Where is your dollar best spent? If you have like a small budget, is it coaching? What, what is it? That's a hard one because honestly, like right off the bat, I want to say mindset coaching, because once again, your mindset will affect every business. It's going to affect your outcome every single time. But I also truly believe that spending your money to create a product like your own course, your own digital product, that is going to give you a better ROI because you're actually going to have that 
that piece of intellectual property that you can sell forever. You can launch it as many times as you want to. You can always have it on your website. You can be posting it on Pinterest. You can be sharing it in so many different ways that you're going to earn back your investment and then some, right? You're going to start earning income off of that digital product. I will say the unique part of my course, Adventurepreneur Academy, is that I really mesh together the mindset and the actual action steps. Because I truly believe that if you don't have the CEO mindset, if you don't have the positive mindset about your outcome, then your outcome is not going to be what you want. So I truly have meshed my mindset coaching and the how-to coaching in one course for my clients. And so that's why I truly think it's a unique course, unlike other course creator coaches out there that maybe haven't spent as much time on the mindset piece. But I will always say the biggest ROI is going to be mindset. There's so, there is information out there about mindset and you can take courses that aren't spending thousands of dollars to fly to an in-person event. You can take courses around mindset and around money. I took a whole course, spent once again, thousands of dollars, but this is just me. And I always get the return on investment on a money mindset course on my mindset around money and releasing the feeling of scarcity, especially in the online space. That resonates with me a lot as a teacher, you know, so much of, of being a teacher isn't teaching your content. It's teaching to the person. And that means that you have to start with your relationship first and making sure that they're in a good headspace to also receive the information that you're giving. So just kind of, because I, I am a former teacher, did it take a lot for you to have to figure out how to be a coach or did you have to do any specific training or do you feel like your energy just has kind of brought you to this space and has made you just a naturally good coach? That's so funny. Um, yes, there has been kind of roadblocks along the way, but I will say they're all mental roadblocks. Any incredible coach or creator that you follow on social media, or you listen to their podcast, or you sign up for their training, they're all just like you, but they're just a couple steps ahead of you. My coaching truly has just come from me learning from others and realizing that <laughs> the money that I'm investing and, and the coaching that I'm getting, it's just building the belief and confidence muscle that you can do it too. You can go out and get all of the certifications in the world. And I talk to a lot of women that are like, oh no, I don't want to do this until I have the certification say with my fitness business. Oh no, I can't help people with fitness until I am certified with this. I'm like, okay, go ahead and spend thousands of dollars on that certification. They're not going to teach you anything about how to market yourself and how to actually earn income online. They're going to teach you about nutrition, which is great. You're gonna feel more confident about the nutrition portion of helping someone, which is awesome. And I do believe that's important in the nutrition and fitness space. Having certifications is important, but I mean, I talk to women, they're like, oh, nope, I'm, I have to go to life coach school before I become a coach online. And I'm like, do you know who created the life coach certification? Just some random dude that said, mm, I'm going to create a certification about this. He didn't have a certification in life. He created the certification. Stop thinking that you're underqualified. Stop doubting your own personal genius. Because we all, like I said, I'm the girl that was like almost failed out of college, thought I was going to be a career waitress, bartender, never had any business experience, didn't have a business degree to starting a brick and mortar that has now grown into two 
amazing brick and mortar, over seven figure business, built online businesses, valued at over six figures, earning more than six figures a year with no business experience. Just the belief that if that person can do it, so can I. And that's what I've held on to. I look at women online that I'm like, I feel like I'm more qualified than her. I can do this. And I've just gone for it. So I feel like the blocks along the way are just the imposter syndrome blocks. But that's all between your ears. Like you said, it's all in your mind. So we all feel the imposter syndrome. I have felt imposter syndrome my entire life, even in the fitness space when I've been asked to speak on stage in front of thousands of wellness entrepreneurs and I'm standing up there speaking. I'm like, I can't believe they asked me to do this. There's so many people that are probably more qualified, but guess what? They're not. I'm qualified. You're qualified. We're all qualified to speak on something we're passionate about. Mm -hmm. Well, after being on the call last night with you, and then even today, I could seriously just be around your contagious motivational energy all day long, but let's end with, with this question. What, what do you see your future looking like? What would, what is a, a big, maybe hope or dream that you, you hope to achieve kind of around the corner in the next few years? Absolutely. So when I opened my businesses, my dream was just to retire from waiting tables and bartending. Honestly, I just didn't want to do that anymore. I couldn't imagine myself being 50 and standing behind the bar and having to talk to people until one in the morning. It just wasn't something I wanted to do. And so my first big goal with my businesses was I wanted to get hair extensions. And I remember two months into my business, I got a check for like $500 and I was like, this is it. And I got my hair extensions and you would think that I had made a million dollars. Like that's how good I felt. And ever since then, I started setting goals for myself within business. So when I and not just setting goals for myself, but sharing those goals publicly. So I love this because I believe that if you share your goals publicly, you're putting it out into the universe energetically and you're letting people know exactly what you want. This is a funny side story. I had a friend that told me three years ago that she wanted to live in a camper with her family because my husband and I have lived in and traveled in an RV now three different times. We've moved in, lived for seven months to a year and just traveled around the country. And she's like, I want to do that. I want to live in a camper with my family. She messaged me last night and she was like, Courtney, we have an offer in on our house. We're getting ready to build our new house. And guess what? We're moving into a camper, but literally in a construction zone while we're building our new house. It wasn't what I imagined. And I said, well, you just put out into the universe that you wanted to live in a camper with your family. You need to get really specific with your goals and let the universe know exactly what you want. So after getting the hair extensions, I was like, I'm going to earn six figures a year with this business, with my online business. I ended up two years later earning exactly a hundred thousand dollars. Like, shoot, I should have said like, 200,000, not just six figures, right? I was very specific. Now I'm very specific. My goal is to earn and have a hundred thousand dollar months with my online coaching business that I'm having such an impact and helping so many women that I'm having a hundred thousand dollar months. My husband and I just bought a new house, which we're very excited about but it is large and it is a 1970s dream home that needs a full remodel. You want to follow along on Instagram. It's in the stories. And two days ago, my husband and I were standing in the kitchen looking at the flooring, which is 1970s sweet flooring, like vinyl flooring. 
And Braden said to me, do you want to get the cheap flooring and just put it in so it looks good for now? Or do you want to do the hardwoods where we literally have to rip up the entire kitchen, put in the hardwood floors. During that time, we're probably going to vault the ceilings and fully remodel the downstairs living area. And I looked at him with 100% conviction. And I said, put in the cheap flooring for now that looks good. In two years, when I'm earning $100,000 a month, we will fly to Bali for two months with our family because I'm going to have a second baby by then. And we're going to hire professionals because we are D- DIYers with all of our homes. We're going to hire professionals to put in the hardwood floors, to vault the ceilings, and to put in our dream kitchen. And he said, okay. So that's the next big vision. And why not me? Why not you? Why not us? And let me tell you, if you learned anything from this podcast, if I can do it, you can do it. Trust me. There's money out there in the universe. And I said this last night on our call, somebody in your neighborhood right now is sending money via PayPal or Venmo or through the interwebs for somebody to somebody else for their knowledge. Why not put your knowledge out there and allow people to have access to it for money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I I love that so so much. What you're saying, why why not you? And you actually put a quote on one of your slides last night. It actually was the very first one, and you said, "I've always believed if you live right, then once is enough." That you follow that philosophy, and it, it's this idea of we need to make it count because then one lifetime really is enough. Wow. Well, thank you so, so much, Courtney, for sharing your incredible insights and experiences with us. Um, It has been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show today. And I will be sure to link all of the information on Courtney Burton in um, the episode description so you can find her, follow her, seek her out as a coach, just like I am doing. I know that I'm beyond excited to start my journey with her. And so I highly encourage you to check her out. If you are also in the beginning phases of reinventing yourself until next time, wander on. If you wandered to this point in the episode, thank you for listening to the wander mode podcast. Please leave a review and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at WanderModeCo. Reach me by email at julie at wandermode.co.